What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your man Jay Smalls. You know we're here, Yak Nasty, Adventures in Fishing. Now, let me tell you something. Sassafras was a very interesting tournament. And wow, I think you'll be surprised at how it all went down. But, before we get started guys, I just want to thank everybody for their support and holding it down. Uh, Cheswell News and Tobacco, my homie Quincy for buying that Yak merch, everyone else on the list. Yes guys, I want to thank all of you guys for buying that Yak merch and uh, allowing me to further Yak Nasty Adventures in Fishing get out there getting some tournaments and uh you know have some fun and hopefully learn a lot in the process so stick around because it's about to go down y'all so let me tell you a little something about the sassafras yeah, i got phones going off that's that's a sign right there guys fishing the sassafras river was something very, very new to me. Very awesome. I had a great time. I gotta say, guys, scared me, had me nervous. I was a bit intimidated. I think that's gonna be the word, intimidated. Well, guys, we're in Maryland. We're very close. We're inside 10 minutes of a mark. I'm just, I'm just so ecstatic, man. I don't even know what to say. I'm happy, I'm nervous, I'm not sure what to think. Never been here before, but we're gonna jump out there and we're gonna have some fun, we're gonna see what's up. Because I was nervous, I wasn't so much scared. I know how to fish, I get out there, get on the water and fish. But it was more so intimidating. Um, being intimidated by such a large body of water, uh, not being there before, uh, not using that as a cop out. It's just, that's part of the game. That was the facts of it. That was my situation. And uh, I got to say, man, I got out there. I tossed around. I caught two fish. Man, they weren't the most awesome fish. It was two catfish. Hook up. All right, let that be a bass. know what it is. Ooh, that's a big cat. Oh, crush the soul. Bunch of big cats though, I heard. All right. And uh, I got to say, guys, it was awesome, okay? I got to see new structure. I got to be in a new environment. Um, tournament number two for me was pretty dang cool. Even though I zeroed out, guys, I did. I completely bombed it. It was like, boom, gone, just bombed it, dude. But at the same time, it didn't get me down. It just got me to learn where I went wrong at and what mistakes I was making out there. To be honest, it was, uh, it was interesting. And soon as, of course, of course, guys, hindsight is twenty twenty. Of course, soon as I get off the water and I look at the map because I'm thinking about it, how is this possible? I don't just skunk out on any day, let alone like a tournament day. I mean, it's possible you, you could do it. I mean, we see that. But I was like, man, I normally find the fish within two hours, you know, or jumping in a spot, I normally find them within two hours. But those bodies of water are way smaller, much more compressed in stature and structure and everything's real close and up against each other. So, you know, you can figure out faster the moods 
or you can figure out the moods faster of the fish. So, it, hey, you know, it happens. But I got to say, I had a good time. Now, I want to let you know, guys, I had a real break on me. Yes, guys, my uh, little Daiwa, that spinning rod, just pooped out on me, guys, while I was out there. It, it was crazy. Um, but, hey, it just took one rod out the equation. That wasn't the, the difference maker at all, um, to be honest. Uh, once I looked at how the day went, what I did, what I did too much of, and, you know, it, it just breaks down to time, efficiency, right? Yeah, I've never been here before, but if I see they're not in this area, move on, you know? And I find myself sitting in one spot for too long, you know what I mean? So I do find myself, after looking at the footage... I'm treating it like a regular fishing day when I have to really be more efficient in finding and catching the fish. So that was one thing that I noticed about myself. Uh, I didn't really spin out. I didn't lose my mind or anything. It was just I didn't open myself up to search other parts of this water. I started out in Turner Creek. And I ended in Turner Creek. I didn't really explore much. I didn't go outside of that creek and head up a little bit north, you know, toward the back of that river to find them. Maybe they were on the main part of the river moving up for spawn. You know, we had 66 degree water temperature. Um, we had real thick, thick fog, as you see there, um, early, early morning and almost half the day. So it was just mistake after mistake I was making and I didn't pick up on those mistakes or adapt to what was going on fast enough. So I should have went to the back of the creek. I never touched the very back of that creek. Never touched it. I don't know if it had anything to offer, but that's one of those things uh, you got to say to yourself, what could have happened if you went to the back? I found myself fishing already fished waters. Yeah, um, I know you could do that, especially when you're throwing a different bait, give those fish a different look. And then, you know, you can probably pick up an extra one or two bites somewhere in between that fished bank or those already fished waters. So I found myself getting in a pattern I want to say getting in an average fishing pattern of just going along the bank counterclockwise or jumping on the docks going clockwise. I did everything everybody else did. So that, that was in sight and in this particular creek. And I realized what I was doing, but it was way too late. And I just really wasted my time and didn't explore enough. Uh, that's one thing I can say, another mistake. So that's mistake number two, um, or maybe even three and four, who, who knows. But I do know I had the right bait choice on, guys, because the winning bait was a chatterbait, if I'm not mistaken. I believe a worm was used, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just listening to some club talk, I didn't really get up in anybody's grill and was like, what were you using? You know, I didn't interview anybody, but at the same time, through the chatter, I heard what baits, you know, really got those fish going and how they caught them. Now, where they caught them, I rarely ask that question. I'd rather go back to the sash myself and find out where those fish are. So I'm not done with Maryland waters. I'm going to tell you that right now. This is just the beginning because in a few days, I fish black water. Yep. Oh my goodness. And I'm not going to tell you much about that. That's going to go in a total package video for and with Addiction Baits and Daryl Willie. Yes, indeedy, the owner and CEO of Addiction Baits. So um, 
that's a good time as well. But I want to do a whole setup for addiction baits and with addiction baits. That's going to be just an awesome episode because I really do like their baits and how they get down. So uh, look forward to that happening very soon and hopefully get to jump on some snakeheads. Um, but to be honest, guys, that's really going to conclude this episode, really. Uh, the Sassafras dealt me a blow. The Sass won me zero. But that's cool because I'm going back. I'm just going to go back. And it doesn't have to be a tournament. I'm going to go back. I'm going to learn that body of water. I want to learn the upper Chesapeake and uh, really get an understanding on how to fish that area in those bodies of water for future tournaments. Now, we got a tournament coming up in Wicomico River. Yes, on May 7th that I may opt out of because, to be honest, guys, it's my birthday weekend, and Lord knows if I'm going to be able to wake up early on a Sunday morning. Yes, even though I should, probably shouldn't even say that, but let's be honest, it's birthday weekend. Man, I plan on having fun with the family, uh, with the wife, and Lord knows I may not be uh, jumping up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go do some fishing, and uh, much as I would like to, I might opt out of this particular tournament and uh, try to get ready and set up for the next one I'm going to get into. Yes, and that's going to be named later on down the line, of course. Had a good time. Shout out to Leon Sims, one of the club members out there, man. He, uh, he put me on how to get my Maryland license and, uh, you know, pretty much told me which ramp and creek he was fishing. So I just jumped out in that direction, uh, going against, of course, my gut instinct after all the research I did. I should have really tried uh, something else, but who knows? Hindsight is twenty twenty. So, but I want to thank him for all the all the fun and all the knowledge and and sharing his experiences with me, so I can get a better understanding on the Sassafras River. I also want to thank. Travis Callaway, he got me the stickers and the patch for River Runners. Yes, indeed, guys. So thank you, Travis, for these things right here because, uh, of course, I like to rep my set, you know. But with that being said, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to get them next time. And if you have any questions, comments, let me know down there below, and I'll get right with you, man. And, hey, maybe... Maybe we can make an episode out of uh, some of these questions, or some of these comments, or or anything anybody has to offer down below. So, thanks for watching the video, guys. Tight lines and all that good stuff everybody says. Peace.